What I particularly want to touch on is thinking about behaviour change in a Scottish context and in particular um, a public sector Scottish context. Um, a lot of what David's talked about, in fact probably all of what David's talked about in terms of um, theory, science, techniques etc, that obviously applies equally north and south of the border, indeed anywhere. Um, and in very broad terms what we're trying to do in terms of changing behaviours is very similar too. Um, so we're trying to get people to lead healthier lives. We're trying to uh, help people and communities become safer. We're trying to grow the economy, for example, by boosting tourism. And that's why you see, give us some examples there, similar campaigns in England and in Scotland. <clears throat> in fact, sometimes the differences almost become impossible um, to spot. I've not got time to show the adverts, but if you've seen the country roads campaign that the Scottish Government has done, and if you've seen the one that was done by the Department of Transport, and if you haven't, I encourage you to go on YouTube and have a look. Almost identical in terms of the creative concept that they, um, they used. And that's no coincidence, that was partly because there was some sharing of insight and a bit of collaboration um, between the two organisations, which is, which is great. However, there are some differences between what happens in Scotland and England. Some of them are quite obvious. Uh, we worked with different governments of different political colours um, and with a different political agenda. But there are some differences which are perhaps not so obvious. Who here has heard of the National Performance Framework? I'm a show of hands. That's impressive, that's good. Probably about two thirds, I think. Uh, national outcomes and indicators? About the same, that's good, that's reassuring. Well, you'll know then that the National Performance Framework um, underpins everything that the Scottish Government and the entire public sector does in terms of uh, trying to deliver for ministers uh, the ambitions they have for Scotland. There's five strategic objectives, greener Scotland, a healthier Scotland, a safer and stronger Scotland, a smarter Scotland, a wealthier and fairer Scotland, plus 16 national outcomes and 50 national indicators all of which added together are designed to deliver the government's single purpose which is a more successful country, opportunities for all through sustainable economic growth. And I think it's the national outcomes and indicators which start to kind of pinpoint the differences in terms of how we apply behaviour change north and south of the border. Because it's the indicators and outcomes which start to address some of the specific issues and deep-rooted problems that, that Scotland has. So, for example, dealing with uh, poor life expectancy, our poor health record, etc. And in this post-referendum era, where the issue of inequalities were brought into such sharp focus, and with an FM, a new FM who's about to come into office, who's made such a big uh, issue about making Scotland a fairer place, I think we all need to be ready to play our part in thinking about how we deliver the national outcome of tackling the significant inequalities in Scotland. <clears throat> and I deliberately use the phrase play our part because it is something that we need to do together. This is not about the Scottish Government delivering against these outcomes and indicators. It's about all of us who work in the public sector doing that. As I've said, the national performance framework applies equally um, across all our organisations. We've all signed up to delivering against those four ministers. <clears throat> So behaviour change, in fact all communications, uh, has to be measured against the contribution it makes to delivering those outcomes and indicators. Now we could all do that individually, we could all work in our own organisations, in our own teams, um, to try and deliver against those outcomes and indicators. But the truth is Scotland's a relatively small place, five million people there or thereabouts. Um, we're often trying to reach very um, similar groups of people, similar segments, and often trying to get them to do quite similar things. Let me give you just one example. So at the start of this month, Scottish Water launched its winter code campaign, which essentially was trying to get their customers to take a few simple steps now, um, so that their pipes didn't freeze and burst when the cold weather hits. Um, so that central heating and the water continues to, to work when it gets, when the freeze hits. So essentially asking their customers to get ready for winter. Yesterday, the Scottish Government launched its Ready for Winter campaign. Again, asking people to take a few simple steps now to prepare themselves for bad weather when it hits and be ready for the consequences of that. Now, I'm not picking on these campaigns. I think they're both perfectly legitimate in terms of their approach and what they're trying to achieve. 
But if you think about that from the consumer's point of view, from the customer's point of view, how does that look and how does that feel? Was there an opportunity to be more joined up and less disjointed? I ask you the question. You can think about it for yourselves. But it doesn't have to be this way. In fact, it can't be this way if you think about budgets being tight. I'm going to remain tight for the foreseeable future. And the public service reform agenda makes clear that public sector organisations have to work together to make their services more effective and more efficient. <clears throat> so let's imagine a public service approach to behaviour change, to marketing, to communications. One where we put the audience first and then design campaigns around them rather than around organisational boundaries. There's 114 public bodies in Scotland, 146 if you include uh, local government as well. I reckon there's over a thousand communications professionals working in those organisations and we know from figures available to us it's about 80 million pounds um, spent by the public sector on marketing. And think about the figure that Jerry told us earlier in terms of what the billions that are spent by um, organisations on advertising every year and that starts to kind of put that into a real perspective in terms of what we're trying to achieve with quite a minimal amount of spend. But imagine if we work together and brought that collective resource to bear and more importantly the collective expertise that we have in those organisations that's in this room, that's in all your organisations. I imagine what it would add up to be a much more efficient and effective approach to our campaigns. Now our business plan for the year ahead, which hopefully you've all had the chance to, to have a look at, um, Delivering Excellent Communications, which was published last week. If you haven't read it, um, please do so. I think it's even less than 18 pages maybe, so it's a, uh, even half a lunchtime you could probably get through it. Please have a look at that. There's a big emphasis on there, in, on partnership working. Partnership working across the public sector, private sector, third sector. And that's no accident, because this year we've talked about collaboration a lot in the past. This is the year we actually want to make it a reality. Ministers are supportive of that. In fact, ministers are demanding that. And this time, for the first time, we're going to be inviting chief execs from some of the biggest public sector organisations into our annual planning cycle with directors in the Scottish Government to agree joint communications priorities for the public sector. <coughs> so we need you to play your part too. Just by being here today, you're showing a willingness to be part of something bigger and better. So let's continue to work together to find solutions. There's endless examples of great communications in the public sector. You're going to hear about more of them today. Uh, David's touched on some in his presentation as well. So let's share what works. Let's share insight. Let's share resources. And before you embark on any piece of work, just ask yourself, would it be better if we collaborated with someone else? Thank you.